How do I know where a stock's price is heading next? Well, unfortunately, I can't know for sure, but I can make a good informed decision. And there's two ways I can do this. There's fundamental analysis and there's technical analysis. Here's the difference. Fundamental analysis is all about dissecting a company's health and performance. For example, LeBron James' son, Bronny, is looking to get drafted into the NBA this year. And guess what the NBA scouts are doing right now? They're running some sort of fundamental analysis on the kid. They're seeing his current performance, what he's capable of doing, how much he's improving, and how fast his growth rate is. He also had that health scare with his heart, which, thank goodness he's okay, but his medical history and all of that will be taken into consideration when deciding how much potential this kid has in the NBA. Now, if we look at his dad, LeBron, who's heading into his 22nd season, his performance is still at a very high level, which is insane, by the way, but his potential to grow probably already peaked. Father time catches up with everyone. So yes, LeBron's performance is much higher than Bronny's right now. He may produce more points, rebounds, and assists. His basketball IQ, his leadership, and locker room presence and all that is much greater. But Bronny's potential to grow is much higher. He has a higher ceiling above him. Now I'm not saying he'll pass or even come close to LeBron's ceiling by the end of his career, but what I'm talking about is growth. How much room does LeBron have to grow in however many years he has left versus Bronny as he's just getting started? So an example of a fundamental analysis is looking at those two things, performance and potential, or in investing terms, earnings and growth. This is talked about in Benjamin Graham's book, The Intelligent Investor. This is the guy that mentored, I don't know if you know him, a gentleman from Omaha, Nebraska named Warren. So highly recommend if you want to dig deeper into fundamentals. So how did this all work with stocks? Where do I even start? Where can I even get this kind of information? Well, actually, it's pretty easy to look up any company's financial statements. The SEC, the Security and Exchange Commission, requires all publicly traded companies to submit a 10K every year and a 10Q every quarter for obvious reasons. It wouldn't make sense to offer shares of a company to you and me to invest in without knowing how that company is performing. So the 10K and the 10Qs are detailed financial reports of exactly that. And all it takes is a simple Google search that anyone can look up. Here's one of Apple's 10K from last year. It has everything from what the business does, risk factors to be aware of that can hurt the company, financial statements, profits, losses, company's expenses. So here I can really pop the hood and see how that engine is running. And with this information, investors and traders use different formulas and models to look for undervalued companies or even overvalued companies, depending on which direction I'm looking to trade. So just like how a doctor checks a patient's numbers, like blood pressure, temperature, body weight, and heart rate, there's healthy numbers. And then there's, holy shit, you're going to fucking die numbers. So it's the same concept with stocks, but here I may look at enterprise value or price to earning ratios or even EBITDAs, which is earnings before interest taxes, depreciation and amortization are taken out or even things outside of the company that can affect it like interest rates or even weather patterns, depending on what I'm investing in. So I can use different models to analyze these numbers, to choose the best candidate, to choose the best draft pick for my team. Now, one problem with fundamental analysis is that it primarily focuses on the company itself and it doesn't really factor in the other people trading it. We all have our own beliefs. We all have our own expectations of where price is heading that may have nothing to do with these formulas and models. And a great example of that is GME. GameStop, the company was losing millions of dollars on paper and looked like it was heading to be the next blockbuster. But then the whole Roy and Kitty situation hits the market and it went from being a penny stock to hundreds of dollars per share. Traders didn't really care about GameStop's financial statements. They were just trading what was trending and this is where technical analysis comes in. So a fundamental analysis is all about earnings and growth. Technical analysis kind of throws that out the window and focuses on supply and demand. For example, let's look at scalpers, people who buy high demand items in bulk to try to resell them. There was a time when graphics cards were super hard to get because of all the crypto miners, didn't matter the brand, they were all sold out and the resale value for them skyrocketed. Even my 4090 card I bought for my most recent PC build, I couldn't get it at release. So I ended up paying more to some scalper in the resale market because they were so limited and everybody wanted it. Or let's look at concert tickets. My wife and her girlfriends, they went to the Taylor Swift concert, the Eras tour in Vegas. Now they were able to get it at retail because they're crazy Swifties like that. But the resale market went insane. I think some of the tickets were reselling for like 
$10,000 or the sneakers market. There's a whole community that trades, buys and sells popular kicks, Jordans, Air Maxes and all of that. But the point I'm trying to make here is that I doubt any of these resellers are looking at financial statements for every single graphics card companies to flip them or buying and selling Jordans because I believe in its function as a basketball shoe. To be honest, I personally think they're pretty uncomfortable to play in. And if somebody is offering 10 fucking big ones for Taylor Swift tickets and I have the opportunity to buy for a couple of hundred bucks, even if I'm not a fan of her or even believe in her brand at all, how many of us are willing to buy those tickets and make that trade? Now, I'm not saying let's all go out in our Jordans and stock up on some GPUs and Taylor Swift tickets. I think they kind of put a roadblock on that stuff anyway by limiting it to one per customer, which I think is great for the people that actually want to buy it but just trying to help understand the concept. So technical analysis is all about supply and demand. Doesn't matter about earnings. It's about what's trending and understanding the marketplace. So in the stock market or any trading instrument, I can use charts to see where that supply and demand is. I like to use candlestick charts. I actually have a whole video on how to read one, which I'll link if you're interested. But basically a candlestick tells me five key information. The opening price, the closing price, and the highest and lowest price and who won between the buyers and sellers within a time frame. And as a stock is being traded, it starts to paint a story of where people are buying and selling. And I can use technical analysis to observe behavioral patterns to anticipate where price is heading next. Now, I'm not going to get into too much details here because it took about seven hours just to teach the basics in the most recent mentorship. But if I see a bunch of buying at $5 and a bunch of sellers coming in at $7, those are some key areas I can pay attention to if I'm looking to trade this stock. So it's all about reading price action. I can notice where price is holding, which is known as support. Think of it like as a floor and where price is being rejected or resistance, which acts as a ceiling. And as price starts to break through these floors and ceilings, trend starts to form and helps me pick a direction. So now the question is, which one is better? Which one do I learn and use? Fundamentals or technicals? Well, it really depends on what my objective is. So to summarize, the main difference between the two is fundamental analysis is used more for longer term investing. So really digging into a company's earnings and growth and looking for undervalued or overvalued companies using formulas and models. Whereas technical analysis is used more for shorter term trading, like day trading, because if I'm in and out the same day, who cares what the financial statements are? I'm just capitalizing off of supply and demand and what's trending by observing patterns. So again, it's not that one is better than the other. It just depends on what I'm trying to do. I'm personally more of a short term trader. So technical analysis always comes first, but let's say I get into a stock and I think it's bottomed and I decided to hold this for long term. And just to check, I want to look at the peg ratio to see where that's at. Sure, why not? Or if I'm investing in an undervalued stock and I want to see if it looks ready on the chart, great. However I use this, the most important thing to understand here is that these aren't a guarantee. These are just tools to help me make the best informed decision. If I'm a health insurance company and I give some guy cheaper insurance because I don't see any bad medical history, no alcohol, no drugs or smoking, the numbers on his yearly checkup always come out healthy, but all of a sudden he catches some disease or some cancer that I couldn't have predicted. It's not wrong that I gave him cheaper insurance. I did my due diligence. I know probability was in my favor but there's always that risk. Understanding that nothing is 100% guaranteed and just using these as tools. Leave a like if you found this helpful. As always, I appreciate you for being here and I hope to see you on the next one. Yeah, let's see how you do under pressure. Oh. Yeah, I've been wanting this shit forever. I've been in the field with whatever they throw at me. Brush it off, pick myself up, moving on to the better. Okay. Hey. Yeah. Ain't no errors, baby, it's a new era. I wake up early, feeling rich like I'm Kesha. I get to the paper, boy.